Before I begin, I'd like to take the time to thank all of you who've participated in posting your questions. I appreciate it and thank you. Okay, let's get into answering them. Is it true the rule about not touching a made man doesn't apply in prison? In prison, we were all considered equal. And there was a saying, you check your pinky ring in at the gate, which means your status in the street didn't count there. Although there's no official rule, everyone's fair game. But there are exceptions, and it depends on who you're dealing with. In Goodfellas, is Billy Bats a made man? If so, why wasn't Henry Hill or Jimmy Burke killed? There's uncertainty as to whether or not Billy Bats was straightened out or not, and I don't have that answer. My opinion why Tommy DeSimone was the only guy to get killed is for starters, Billy Bats wasn't the only guy that Tommy DeSimone killed that was associated to the Gambinos. And since he was an associate, one with the possibility of being inducted, he went on principle. Jimmy Burke was a big earner with his own crew, so Paul Ivario would never okay having him killed. And as far as Henry Hill, if he was actually there, he was considered insignificant. How big a role does hijacking play in the Lucchese family's income? Has it fallen out of favor? During my time, I don't believe any hijacking was taking place. Not so much because it fell out of favor, but as a result of the GPS tracking systems placed in most trucks today that acts as a deterrent for hijackers. Is the old tradition of tithe still practiced in some families? I read Joe Profaci made all members and associates do that every month. Money's kicked up to the administration, similar to what Joe Profaci expected. How much and what percentage it is depends on the boss and the family, and it all varies based on that. How do you tell a person you're a made guy without telling them? First of all, you never tell a civilian who you are. There was a saying, if a guy tells you you don't know who I am, crack him. But there are ways to hint to another member. For instance, there was a time that I had to speak with Gary Gugliaro, a member of the Colombo family. We've never been formally introduced. And when I told him I needed to have a conversation with him, I said, if you like, I could call your friend Joey Amato and have him come here first. He understood what I meant. He said that wasn't necessary. And we took a walk and spoke. Gary used to be in Joey's crew years ago. Based on the same question, another viewer from Australia wrote, Let's say you're in a bar and someone is behaving like a jerk. How could you not lay hands on them? Unfortunately, there's a lot of people acting like jerks in bars. It's why the old timers would tell you, stay out of those places. As a member, you had to always keep in mind, you have the advantage over civilians and you should never abuse or take advantage of that fact. In situations or confrontations, it all boils down to who you are as a man. If you feel you need to pick your hands up, you will. Conversely, what you say and how you say it can put a jerk in check quickly. According to Joe Piston, he was approached by a woman in a bar one time who said hello. And in turn, he approached the bartender saying he wanted to go on record about the incident. How would it be handled if a stranger approached you or someone who was made or an associate and asked to go on record about something? For starters, if Joe Pistone approached the bartender about putting an incident on record, that should have been a big red flag for most people. If someone approached me with that, I would have told them I don't know what you're talking about. For example, someone in Staten Island who is an active informant to this day, and at the time, I was unaware of his informant status. So while in Staten Island, he approaches me one day and mentions a half sheet, which has to do with a sports book. My answer to him was, I don't know what you're talking about. When I go to bed at night, I use a whole sheet. Which family had the most power in Staten Island during your time? All of the families were represented in Staten Island, but I would have to say that the Gambino family had the most influence. As far as power, every family is powerful in their own right. What are the reputations of each of the five families among wise guys? To put it in simple terms, the West Side was known to be a big money bogata, but a pain in the ass to deal with. The Gambinos tightened their act up post John Gotti and were fairly easy to deal with. The Bananos were known to be dysfunctional, operating most of the times outside of the rules of Cosa Nostra, with the exception of when Joe C. took control. He tried rebuilding that Bogata the correct way, but they were also known to be sneaky in sit-downs. I actually have a very entertaining story about a sit-down we were involved with with them, but I'm waiting on pictures. As far as the Colombos, any dealings I had with them, I felt they were okay. They were a smaller family, but they held their own. And lastly, the Lucchese family. Let's call it what it is. Known to kill their friends, sneaky and paranoid, 
What other answer would you expect from me? Suppose you had a pizza parlor paying you protection money every month. Could your captain take it away from you to give it to someone else, even if you're not in jail? You can have a guy who's on record with you taken away. For example, Joey DiBenedetto had Joe Fama and his construction company, DeFama, on record with him, a cash cow. But Maddie Madonna wanted 30000 a month from Fama, and they eventually took him away from Joey. Joey had complained about it to me one day. So the short answer is, when it comes to money in that life, anything goes. Is it true that a great deal of specific questions would pique law enforcement or even the tax man's interest? I don't know about the IRS, but I'm sure law enforcement monitors things said online, especially from people who think they're slick. Remember, the government will wait five to 10 years and then hit you over the head with an indictment. Let me mention the super thanks icon underneath this video for anyone who wants to show support for this podcast. And thank you. What happens to a member's mistress and child or children if the member goes away or he passes away? How do I answer that? There are many factors and just as many answers. If a guy's girl is now without her guy, whether he went to prison or passed away, if she's nice looking, there'll be a line of his former friends checking in on her. That's probably the best answer. It seems there were a lot of guys who wound up cooperating because they went away. Nobody took care of their families. Their rackets and businesses were taken over. Seems like a good way to have a loyal guy start questioning who his friends really are. Why would a family do this and risk a guy cooperating? Before I answer, I think this is the mob's biggest downfall. The short answer is greed. Most of those type of scenarios went on throughout the years. The bottom line is, don't go out to dinner one night, take that money and put it on the side for a guy's family who's away. Taking or rather glomming a business or a guy's urn is wrong and shouldn't be permitted. These things never have a happy ending. If you would be a boss, how would you reorganize the Lucchese family? Well, the answer would require me to do two things. Think backwards, and I focus my thoughts moving forward. And two, my days of trying to better the Lucchese family are long past. Not that I have the formula to run a family, but these are not people I want to see succeed in life. In fact, it's quite the opposite. 